Welcome back. WNST. Towson, Baltimore. Baltimore positive. Uh, it's tough to do the elimination stuff. And uh, certainly the aftermath of all the Orioles stuff. We're going to be talking Orioles, free agency, lease, uh, contracts for Gunner. And we're going to do all that stuff. We got a football game on Sunday. Uh, we're going to be up at Hollywood Casino in Perryville beginning about 8 a.m. for breakfast. Come on by. Get some French toast with us, eggs and bacon, and uh, spend the day with us. I'm going to be having the salmon BLT. Uh, might even have an ice-cold uh, beverage up there as well. Breakfast from Tottenham against the Titans this week. Uh, it's all at Hollywood Casino. 30 bucks for the uh, the buffet if you want to participate. You don't have to, but if you do, you get entered into winning all sorts of cool stuff. It is a casino after all. You can play games all day and watch the games all day. Come on up with us at Hollywood Casino up in the sports book. Christian Horton and I are going to make our picks. I had a pretty good week last week picking games. Uh, had a better week than the Orioles had in Arlington, but uh, certainly a better week than the Ravens had in Pittsburgh. Luke Jones joins us now. He's going to join us on Friday at the Drug City at the Fountain. We're going to be upstairs in the uh, tasting room. Luke's going to see what gourmet potato chips and milkshakes are all about and properly soda jerked sodas. Little, uh, we'll get you a little uh, 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 egg, whatever they call that stuff. I don't know. I mean, little little uh, uh, almond smash. That's delicious as well. So come on by on Friday. We'll be there in the afternoon. It's a Maryland Crab Cake Tour presented by the Maryland Lottery. We'll have some hopefully lucky Raven scratch-offs to give away. We all need some good luck this week, um, as well as our friends at Window Nation, 866-90-NATION, and our newest sponsors at Jiffy Lube and Jiffy Lube Multicare. Uh, Luke is multi sport. Um, multi rest at this point, you can, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about ALCS. We were going to fly to Minnesota. Now we're going to fly to Houston. Now we're going to go to Toronto. Now we're going to Tampa. Instead, we are still here in Arlington talking about football, uh, amongst other things. We're done with baseball for now. Can, can we, can we, do we have enough bandwidth here to sort of focus on the Ravens on, uh, on Sunday morning, Luke, as they disappear, giving you a little bit of a bye week from going out to Owings Mills on a week that, this would have been an uncomfortable week in Owings Mills. I have a feeling it's not been a very comfortable week in London. Yeah, it's kind of one of those situations where I think normally the Ravens aren't used to being second fiddle, which they kind of have been here in late September and obviously the Orioles playing in October, albeit briefly. But now they're back to being under the spotlight, even being over in London this week. And... It's not a good feeling when you lose to the Pittsburgh Steelers in the fashion in which they lost. And we talked at length about that game, but uh, I think if there was a silver lining for the Ravens, it was, hey, we're leaving the country. Everyone's focused on the Orioles uh, and the ALDS in Texas and trying to come back from 0-2. And uh, I'm guessing some people with the Ravens, and not specifically John Harbaugh or the team itself, but I'm guessing there were some people that might have, hope that maybe the Orioles would carry on a little bit longer, uh, at least until Sunday. And, you know, you try to get yourself back on track uh, as you're playing the Tennessee Titans, but you know, not, not a great feeling this week when you're coming off of the kind of loss that they had against the Steelers. You know, the good news is that they do, you know, they are getting healthier. You know, we talked about the, the guys who returned uh, in last Sunday's game uh, against the Steelers. And, you know, you would hope, that that the injury reports are favorable uh, as we get closer and closer to kickoff Sunday morning. But this is a team looking to get back o on track. And I think this is a team that as we've been talking about for a while now, and I, and I will get back into writing uh, a little bit more uh, with a focus on the rate or on the Ravens, of course, with the Orioles now being done, but this team's got to figure out how to finish football games. Twice in three weeks, you know, when you go back to Indianapolis uh, and what happened in week three uh, and, of course, what they what happened at the, the place formerly known as Heinz Field. I, I, I can't bring myself to call it what is it, Acrisure Stadium or whatever it's called. I can't even remember. It's going to take uh, me at least 15. Yeah, years. it's I mean, weird, right? But all these places like Comiskey yeah. and the Jake and it's so know. odd. Yeah, but but at, at the same time, I mean, we saw this last year. They had issues finishing football games and snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. And I think I pointed this out to you at some point might've even been at some point prior to game three, uh, at, as we were getting ready for Orioles Rangers, we did talk about the Ravens for a few minutes, just you and I uh, off air. Yeah. You, know, you kind of look at this team right now. It's DNA. I would say is more 
struggling to finish some football games and leaving teams in games. And we've seen that happen a couple times this year. Saw that happen a handful of times last year. And look, I'm not saying that's every week. Of course. Well, Tyler Hurley team. did play a little bit for a couple minutes, uh, you know, two weeks ago. But I mean, it's, you know, we're, we're not talking about every week. We're not talking about this, meaning they're a bad football team. Far from it. But these games that they have dropped the last couple years, that is the difference between playing in the first round or potentially being a wild card compared to winning the division and having a chance to be the number one seed. When you're talking about dropping two or three or four games uh, on a yearly basis that, you look at it and say, you shouldn't have lost that game. No, it's going to happen. You're not going to be perfect over the course of the season. No one's saying you're going to go 17-0. and Of course not. But when you have these games where it really feels like you've outplayed your opponent, and for whatever reason, you're making a mistake here, a mistake there, a mistake there, a turnover here, a fumble there, a miscommunication, which has become all too prevalent you know, in terms of their operation – you know, these are the things that add up to an extra couple losses in a season than you normally would have had. And that's the difference between being 10 and seven or 11 and six compared to having a chance to be 13 and four or 14 and three, where then you're talking about being able to surpass Kansas City, surpass Buffalo, throw Miami in that conversation with the way their offense has played this year. Uh, so, you know, that that's. This team's part of their identity the last couple of years has been doing way more of that than come from behind victories, for example. So not saying that they're going to be in that in that same position against the Titans on Sunday. But at some point in time, you got to figure out how to finish football games. You got to figure out how to play a more complete 60 minutes or you'll continue to drop some of these games here and there that you really feel like you shouldn't drop. And again, that adds up to playing in the first round that adds up to playing more road games in January than having a chance to, to be a number one seed to get a first round by. So, you know, we'll see how it plays out on Sunday. I mean, certainly going, you know, going across the pond. I mean, there, there's not as much uh, media there, you know, there are a, a handful of reporters, but not many. So, you know, they, they kind of get, a, get away from it, but with the Orioles having lost now, the focus comes back on the Ravens. And uh, I said this on Sunday, you know, I, I said this in the aftermath of what happened Sunday. For the Orioles, there was more disappointment. For the Ravens, I think there was way more disgust in how that loss to the Steelers played out. So this is a team that needs to turn the page and put together a more complete performance against the Titans in London on Sunday. Well, I think we start to think about the next couple of weeks now, right? Because we were at the, well, what happens with the Lions and the Orioles and the ALCS? And then they're going to go to Arizona. And Arizona stinks, but maybe they don't stink that much and certainly not at home. They're now in a stretch where they're playing a team with a real defense on Sunday in the morning, and we're going to be up at Hollywood Casino. Come on out. Um, I would say this looks to be a tougher game than it did a couple of weeks ago. The Titans have sort of come to life, at least defensively, for what they would want to do. And we talk about Lamar's Waterloo. Pick the Chargers, the Titans, the Bills. You, you know, there there, there, there have been difficulties that defenses and defensive-minded coaches like Mike Vrabel – put together something here and the Ravens did not fare well on this trip. By the way, the ja Jaguars won again over there. And there's something about the experience of Nathan Avaldi we saw the other day, the experience of Bruce Bochy, the experience of having done it before. The Jaguars are good at going over there. The Ravens, my God, dude. I mean, <laughs> if I could pick you up, we're in Arlington right now. It's early in the morning. You know, we're about to get out of here and escape. If I could pick you up and say, dude, I'll tap you on the shoulder. We'll fly to London right now. And, you know, we'll go over there. The, the notion that it would go any better than it went last time, the first thing you'd say is, I recognize this. This didn't go well. I really wonder what Harbaugh and the organization learned the first time around about going over there. And, and obviously, the political turmoil, the knee, the goof run in the country, all of the stuff that was going on, that's six years removed now. I, I, and that really did get caught up into all the bad things that happened, including I think the Jaguars just being a better team that year. They wound up being a playoff team and all mm -hmm. that, but we all have some, um, we, you know, some shock therapy in regard to the, especially those of us who flew over there and remember walking through Soho after getting your ass kicked that I and Harbaugh remembers that plane ride home. Well, as well, 
this Pittsburgh thing on the front end of that, this is a real measurement for me to see these guys rebound. I want to see Marlon Humphrey rebound. I want to see Mark Andrews and all the guys that drop passes. Re- I want to see Lamar, who threw the fatal pick, rebound. I, I want to see them go over to London, have a professional week of practice, not bitch about the fact they don't put ice in your drinks, they drive <laughs> on the wrong side of the road, all that fun stuff that I'd be doing right now if I weren't in Arlington. At least I'm taking some good barbecue home, so we got that going for us. We didn't have to drive to Austin to do it. Um, this is a weird week for them, and if they get their ass kicked and they come back as a 500 team, I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, I'm going to bet against them this week in, in my when I make my picks for Christian Horton from Hollywood Casino. I don't like the way they're trending just from an injury standpoint where the coach is and his thing where the quarterback is on getting paid where they are just in general about bringing this thing together I want to see them bring it together and part of bringing it together is doing it against the Titans in a good defense moving the ball against the good defense catching the ball executing plays then playing defense and maybe even getting your backup quarterback on the field right against a team that does not have fireworks offensively, if you can stop the running back, if you can tackle the running back. Now, next week, Detroit, after that, then they're going to go play in Arizona. These next couple of games, where are they going to be, Luke? They'd be four and three, three and four, five and two, six, six and two. I mean, can, can, can they, you know, I don't know. Can they win three games in a row? I don't know. I mean, if they do that, now we go to Halloween. We're like, all right, they're back on track. Doesn't feel back on track with the record. Doesn't feel back on track with, to your point, Steelers, Colts, meltdowns, you, you, literally meltdowns, Get giving games away, including giving game, games away at home and giving a games away in Pittsburgh where they should know better. And, dude, they're, they're two decisions and a play away from being 5-0. and oh. There's been years we could say that. Um, but they haven't been dominant. They haven't been confident. They haven't played a great game. They haven't played a good game. I mean, they haven't, they haven't played a game I'd look at and say they'll beat Buffalo, they'll beat Kansas City, and they'll beat b- 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 in whatever order. I, I haven't seen any sign. I see the potential, as as Coach Billick would say. Your potential is going to get me fired. Well, the potential is there. And if John Harbaugh gets fired, because and I hear I'm not going to be the guy fire the coach. I've been on the air, oh, 32 years, and I haven't tried to fire a coach yet. Uh, so I'm not going to start today. But – the, the winds blow in that direction. And this is where it's the middle of the season and they got to start showing some signs that they're as good as their roster construction was in the off season. Yeah. I, I'll disagree a little bit that we haven't seen them look good at time. I mean, I, I thought unless you just think the Bengals completely stink and this past week maybe showed some you know signs of life for Cincinnati. Bengals stuck that, that day, but that Okay, the Ravens made them stink, though. Like, I don't, I, I don't agree with your assessment that they haven't looked good at all, or like that it's. Been, I think the defenses look good. I think it's been up and down. You know, I, I thought the offense played very well against Cincinnati. I think, you know, the offense has been a work in progress. The defense has played at a high level, but I, I think it, it's tough for me to look at that win in Cincinnati. Tough for me to look at the Cleveland game, which was weird because Watson didn't play, but like. What do you want them to do? Uh, they won 28 to three. You know, it, it's not as though they let them stay in the game. For me, it's just that they're way too inconsistent. You know, it, it's that simple. I'm not trying to make it out to be that they haven't been impressive at times because I think they've been very impressive at times. But same thing applied last year. You know, at some point in time, your identity is that you are leaving teams in games too frequently and you're letting games get away. That happened last year. It happened against Miami. It happened against Buffalo when they had a a multi-score lead. It happened against the Giants. It happened against Jacksonville later in the season. It happened when Kenny Pickett threw a touchdown on Sunday night football in Baltimore. And it's for all that is you have to go on the road and play football all of January. When you drop games games you shouldn't drop and you look at the end and you've only got 11 instead of 13, you go on the road. Yeah. Or you you have 10 instead of 12. I mean, you know, it's not – we're not talking about the difference between being a good team and a bad team. We're talking about the difference between being a pretty good team that has these flaws that leaves teams in games. And this happens a lot in the NFL. Uh, you know, we've talked about that a lot. The NFL 
I feel as time goes on, becomes more and more like the NBA where, you know, stick around for the fourth quarter and you, you see what happens, right? Uh, I mean, it's it's just one of those deals where uh, there's a lot of Well, the Texas Rangers would be a good example of that, right? <laughs> sure, sure. But I, I think for me, you know, and you just did this and we all do this, but I'm kind of at until they show they can be a more complete football team and finish off inferior opponents, teams that I believe to be inferior, we need to stop doing this. Oh, well, you know, they, they should win this game and they should win this game. And okay, this game might be challenging. When you lose to the Indianapolis Colts, that is a rebuilding team that has a that had their backup quarterback. And, and I get it. I mean, Indianapolis had has some good things going for them, but they're not a, a great team overall. And they were playing at home. That Pittsburgh team is not a good football team. Maybe Mike Tomlin will have them being uh, a decent team as the year goes on, but I do not at all subscribe to the idea that the Steelers are a good football team right now. Now that said, same record as the Ravens. So, you know, you are what your record says you are, but they've got to find a way to finish off teams. They've got to be more complete. I need to not see a football team in every phase of the game face adversity and then crumble in in crunch time, which is what they did uh, on Sunday in Pittsburgh. I'll hear it. Lamar Jackson played great football until the fourth quarter, but the fourth quarter still counts. That's still important. Well, yeah, when the crumble I'll, is Jackson and and Humphrey, that's can't everyone. Be the crumble. It's the everyone. Crumble can't be Mark Andrews dropping passes. It, it can't be the the defense was fantastic for most of Sunday's game, but you played your worst football at the end of the game, and that's becoming an alarming pattern for this football team too often where you're letting some of these games that should be games that are in hand games in which you led and they're letting a team hang around and then things start to go sideways, a turnover, whatever it might be, you know, a, a mental mistake. And then they just crumble. And that's becoming, like I said, they've been doing more of that the last two years than having these great comeback victories where you're down 13 points and come back and win. So that for me is unsettling in terms of trying to really assess where this team is in terms of being pretty good to good to great. You know, they're, they're doing things that great football teams don't do. Uh, So that that's where it is right now. It's not, it's not a sense of panic, but I mean, put teams away. Oh, they they're had, good enough. They're, that, that's the part of the problem. They're good that's enough. What, that's to what's win concerning. A lot of games. Yeah. Exactly. If this was yeah. a lack of talent, then that's a different story. You know, like the Orioles pitching, we look at it and say, okay, they lost. That, that's why it wasn't good enough. They, well, yeah, what they have on the field should be good enough. If, if, if I don't think three weeks ago when they're missing seven and eight starters, now that they're rounding into this, this yeah. is a test for them because they're a better team than the Titans as constructed. They, they should, should beat be. the Titans. They should they beat should. the Titans. They should, but I'm skeptical that they're going to. And that doesn't mean I'm picking against them per se, but well, I need I'm to not, go see them do it. I'm not nearly as confident in their ability to let me rephrase that. Not as confident in the fact that they're actually going to do it. I think the ability is there, but at some point in time, you can keep talking about potential, potential, potential. You are what your record says you are. And, you know, go back to last year, you know, to the point that I'm trying to make, because I'm that's where I feel like this has become an alarming part of their DNA. And I think this started at the end of 2021, fully acknowledging, of course, Lamar Jackson wasn't out on the field. And of course, he's not on the field. Nothing really matters. But think of how they lost those last six games with two point tries and different things that just, you know, the ball didn't roll their way. It was a six game losing streak, but it's not as though they were awful. You know, they were in all but one of those games, which is, remember, that was the Burrow Bengals game where they had COVID and injury issues. And, you know, they had a, you know, it, what felt like a junior t- high team uh, of guys out there compared to the varsity. But I felt like some of those losses, there was a little bit of a hangover with that for everyone. And last year, you look at it the Miami loss, the Buffalo loss, the, the loss to the Giants. The Jacksonville game, another game where, you know, Trevor Lawrence marched down the field and it was the defense wilting late. Uh, the Pittsburgh game, you know, you, that, that the game that they lost the week before Christmas to Cleveland with Tyler Huntley, you know, the Browns were just kind of better than them that game. I mean, it's not as though the Ravens like 
did anything in that game other than just the fact that, yeah, they have their backup quarterback on the field and their offense isn't good enough. But most of those losses that I just talked about from last year, they did things, they self-destructed. And that's what's concerning to me. You're going to have a couple games every year. Even the best teams are going to have at least a couple games every year that you just get beat. You know, the other team just plays way better than you do. And it's not even that you play horrendously and shoot yourself in the foot. You just, you know, you just don't have a great game. It's bad matchup, injuries, whatever it might be. We were in the Cowboys complex, which we'll we'll spend a a month talking about the Cowboys complex. But they got their ass kicked by the 49ers. That's not to say that maybe in January it's different. But the Cowboys aren't a bad team, but they they played like a bad team in a big game. And, and, And again... It's not, I don't think it's a talent issue. I mean, even talk about the wide receivers dropping passes the, this past Sunday. I mean, it was awful, but it's not as though they, they were dropping a bunch of passes in their first four games. And this was just, you know, something that they've been doing. It just you know, it kind of popped up. But my concern is when things pop up, you know, for this team, when, when an issue pops up, you know, some mistake, you know, fumbled snap, you know, Tyler Linderbaum snapping the ball when, when, you should not be doing that. And you cost yourself a field goal at the end of the first half. Uh, when something happens, you know, adverse in game adversity, they have not handled it well. And that's a couple years now that we're talking about that. And that is something where I agree with you on the, you know, talking about firing the head coach, but I will hold John Harbaugh responsible for that. When you have a team that is not handling adversity in game very well, and you're making some questionable decisions or you're just getting too cute. You know, my big thing with the, the end of the first half with what happened there, yeah, Tyler Linderbaum didn't do what he was supposed to do, and he owned that, but what was the upside to even bothering with that? You know, just kick the field goal. Showing how smart you, a head coach you were are. You, were you really, showing how you can strategize. Were you really that worried about Pittsburgh marching down the field with, what, 15 seconds to go or whatever it was? They hadn't moved the ball the entire half. You know, so what were you were really trying to gain there? Was the juice really worth the squeeze there and even trying to do, to do that, knowing that something like that could potentially happen? So, yeah, John Harbaugh is responsible for that. And they need to be better when, when you're talking about some of these in-game situations and when you're talking about just handling adversity, because they are gaining such a reputation these last couple of years where you let a team hang around, you let a team hang around, you let a team hang around, and then that team actually does something to punch back and they fold. Uh, I mean, that's happened several times. Can he pick it through the ball over their head to beat them? Yeah. I mean, it's just that shouldn't happen. And and again, that's not to say they're bad, but that right there that we just laid out is the difference between being a playoff team. Great. Good. Don't take that for granted. But that's the difference between just being a playoff team and not really having a great belief that you're going to make a deep run. And, and not being in position to be the number one seed and to be playing multiple home playoff games and being in that position where you're vying for the number one seed and you have a chance to have home field. So it's cost them. It's, it's absolutely cost them the, going back a couple of years now. And I just, you know, I want to see a team with a little more of a killer instinct. I want to see a team that what happened on Sunday, you're going to have mistakes happen. I'm not expecting perfection. But I don't like how they've handled imperfection within these games, if that makes sense. I don't like the fact that they had breakdowns in every phase late in that football game, including Lamar Jackson, who had played great until that point, including the defense, who had played great to that point. I don't like how they collectively are handling adversity in some of these games. And, you know, they're just coming up small and in, in some really big spots. And, you know, that's not the mark of a team that's inspiring confidence that that you're going to win multiple games in January and get to a Super Bowl. They are a four-point favorite. Uh, we're going to be up at Hollywood Casino in Perryville on Sunday morning. You can bet on the game. You can have the $30 brunch with us. Luke's going to be joining us for the Maryland Crab Cake Tour on Friday. That's brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. I have some Raven scratch-offs to give away. Our friends at Window Nation and Jiffy Lube uh, with us as well. So we're going to get the Crab Cake Tour going again. Obviously, we have a game in London on Sunday that's got – you know, paramount significance. I mean, this really puts the focus back on Lamar, the Ravens, the Orioles aren't playing tonight, tomorrow night, anytime for the next six months, we're going to have plenty of Mike Elias and John Angelos and least talk and all of that. But the actual focus on the Ravens and their hope and their promise uh, to, to win a Super Bowl will be, we're going to live and die with that the next couple of weeks. And I would say 
for the state of the franchise and where they are, that the defense is ahead of the offense right now. That's not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad sure. thing at all that Roquan Smith's been great and Patrick Queen's been visible and Kyle Hamilton has emerged and, you know, all of these things. But there, there is this focus on the offense to say, first off, getting the pieces in, in order, right? Like, it was always Ronnie Stanley, Ronnie Stanley, let's get him back. Then it's Lamar, Lamar, Lamar every December now, for, you know. And now it's – Beckham and the money and who's really going to run the ball and are they going to fumble the ball and where's the ball security and Melvin Gordon and, 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 and Anthony Mitchell's kid and what happened to Gus? And so, so to me, this, the identity you talk about is what are you going to be offensively? Because 6,000 yards of passing and we're going to throw the ball 40 times a game, like all that. And to your point last week was almost the worst case scenario. Lamar hasn't played much in Pittsburgh. He hasn't played big in Pittsburgh. He hasn't had a chance to play in Pittsburgh, COVID, all the things that happen. And he throws the ball really well, like really well. I mean, hits guys between the eight and the whatever mm -hmm. or in their single digits because that's what they all have to wear now. I mean, you want to wear a single digit jersey, catch the ball, <laughs> catch the ball. You know what I mean? And – so and then Lamar gets heat, right? Because he throws the pick at the end and he thinks, well, he can't throw that pick. But sure. if any of those number of those guys catch a ball, he it's he's not even in the game to your point. And the ball can't go over Marlon Humphrey's head. So it really does kind of work in unison that once they can't run the ball and once they're not in second and two, or Lamar has to run the ball and have a chance of getting broken in half. Um a lot of things conspired in Pittsburgh to go wrong for them. And I'm the Marlon Humphrey thing aside, ball going over his head, not good for the defense that that happens. Pass rush, like to see more, you know, run stopping, fine. They're going to need to run stop this week. And no doubt about that, right? So offensively, finding them in some level of what are you, who's doing what, what are our roles here, Who's usurping this J.K. Dobbins role? What's Odell Beckham doing on the team? Is Bateman going to go in the Brashad Perryman category? I mean, get Aguilar out there more if he's going to run around, get open, and maybe catch the ball some of the time. He had drop -ish. Philadelphia people thought he was a dropper a, a decade ago. Um, yeah, I mean, all these names and all these people and Morgan Moses and McCary and who's going to play right tackle and um, Linderbaum comes back and winds up making the biggest mistake of the game and he's the heady guy, right? So the, the offense for me, finding whatever that's going to be because it feels disjointed in a lot of ways yeah. because of the offensive line, because of the injuries. Now we have drops we can add into this. But it really started when Dobbins went sideways early on and we're like, all right, that was the plan. That He was going to be the guy taking the ball instead of Lamar the first half of the game, three quarters of the game before we get to Gus. What is this going to be when it grows up? And we're six weeks into this. Let's figure this out. Yeah, I, I really like that you just said, what is this going to be when it grows up? Because I think – we've seen stretches where it has looked good, right? I mean, I mean, again, the quick game that they used in Cincinnati, I love that, you know, especially considering what the state of their offensive line was and Lamar operated that so well. So, you know, we've seen what it can look like, you know, it has hardly been all bad, you know, far from it, but at the same time, you need more consistency and, you know, some, sometimes e even in a couple of their wins, they haven't necessarily finished games as well as you would like you know whether you're getting into your four minute offense and running the football and being able to chew clocks so you know it's not as though they've been perfect even in their in their victories but you're, you're right you want to start seeing this become what it's supposed to become and you know that goes for Todd Munkin that goes for running the ball that goes for throwing the ball that goes for catching the ball you know, just knowing assignments, not having pre-snap penalties, not having mistakes like Tyler Linderbaum made oh, on Sunday. But, you know, it, yeah, there, there, there's something to be said about what exactly is the identity. I mean, you know, the passing game has at times looked good. You know, I, I think Lamar Jackson at times has looked really good, but there have also been times where it hasn't looked as 
effective. It's just been very up and down, very inconsistent. Uh, a lot of drag. That That's the term that Todd Munkin likes to use in terms of just the operations. So, you know, you need to start putting that together. And yeah, it, it's only week six. You know, there's a lot of football left and they're three and two. They're in really good position, you know, because this is not, even if this division looks a little bit different than we were talking about it a, a week ago, because, you know, Cincinnati looked a little more like Cincinnati, albeit not against, you know, a, a top elite team or anything like that, but got to win when they absolutely needed it. And as much as we've spent time talking about the Steelers not being good, and I still don't think they're very good, but give them credit. They, they eventually took what the Ravens were trying to give to them for, you know, three and a half quarters. They, they finally took it after that. So I guess you give them credit too. Uh, Browns, we'll see what's going to happen with Watson. But the point is, this division is just is still sitting right there for the Ravens to seize control of it. And they're 2-1 and one on the road in the division. Should be 3-0, and oh, but they're not. But that's still, you know, you'll take that, right? Way better than being 0-3 in the division. But at some point in time, you want to see this start to take hold as far as what you envision it being. And I think it is still very much a team that wants to run the football pass it a little more than they did in previous years, certainly be a little more wide open. And we've seen them use way more 11 personnel, way more three wide receiver sets. And I think from a spacing standpoint, I think that will give them more room to run the football between the tackles. I think that will help Lamar Jackson shake free uh, when, when he scrambles and takes off. So I understand what they're trying to do, but you still need to go out and do it. And that's where it's just been very, very choppy for them. So you hope, you know, you mentioned the right tackle situation. We'll see how that looks this week. You know, Morgan Moses, you know, missed a, his first game in nine years this past Sunday. McCary left with a chest issue. So we'll see what the injury report looks like, the practice participation looks like. But overall, they are getting healthier. So that's where you do take some solace, even with, you know, the, these two disappointing defeats in three weeks where you say, they lost games they should have won, you know, based on how most of those th those games looked. But they are getting healthier, which should make a difference. But it, it, it's time to start putting it together because, you know, they they do have some tough stretches that are coming up. Not I'm not a big believer in the Titans, but they're not complete garbage either or anything like that. You know, they'll they'll beat you, and we've seen this in the past. They'll beat you uh, if you don't play your best football. The Ravens painfully have learned that lesson. So, got to shut down the run. Got to play mistake-free football, limit the turnovers. I mean, they, they've got to knock off the turnovers. I mean, I mean, you're just killing your operation when when you give the other team the football. I mean, that's it's Captain Obvious, but they've got to do it. You know, you've got to stop turning the ball over. Uh, so, you know, they, they they do that, get a win in in Tennessee, have a flight home, play a, against a good Detroit Lions team. Uh, you know, then you're feeling much better about yourself uh, at that point. But if you go to, you know, you go to London and notice they did arrive much earlier. They, they flew to London on Monday rather than Thursday. Like well, you remember did. a couple of years ago, John did all that hokey pokey out on the West coast yeah. at Santa San Jose. And we're going to stay here. I, I don't, I don't know. It's kind of like asking Brandon Hyde about five days off, which I did in the aftermath last yeah. week. It's like, what do you do with something with creatures of habit when you break their habit to make it feel like you didn't break their habit when they know you broke their habit and your the, the cars are on the wrong side of the road and it's six hours behind and your wife's over there. And there's nothing normal about being overseas, especially when you have a business to do. And yeah. I mean, they're not on vacation over there. Um, all those parts of it may feel that way when they go out for fish and chips for dinner and, you know, and, and the league wants them to do certain things and the Ravens flocks all, I don't know how many people flocked over there. I know we, some fans went, I don't think it'll be nearly as much as the first time. Um, just, on the basis of the dollar and how much it was a really expensive trip. Um, so I don't know about all that, but none of the will be normal. And the guys who know the trip this six years ago, what are they? Yeah. Five, six guys left on that roster. Justin Tucker, a handful of guys. I mean, Flacco was in that locker room for crying out loud. Yeah. I, I don't think it's that many Nestor. I, I don't have it in front of me, but Justin Tucker comes to mind. And after that, I mean, you're talking, you know, Brent Urban was on that team. Obviously, he had a stint, you know, stints elsewhere and then came back. That's it. But it's not it is not many. You know, Stanley. You 
Ronnie Stanley. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there there are a couple, but it, it is not many. It really is not. So, and let's be clear, that's probably that might be a good thing, you know. <laughs> so they don't. So they're not thinking about that because we just talked about, you know, this team hasn't handled situations well when it goes sideways. It, it's kind of snowballed for them, right? So so maybe that's a good thing. But yeah, I mean, it's you know, they're going out there earlier. How are they going to handle that? You know, uh, I, I'm I'm not questioning their professionalism. But how are you handling things, you know, that you're you are outside of your comfort zone, you are in a different environment. So how are they going to handle that? I think it's perfectly reasonable to ask that at the same time on paper, on paper. And the same thing applied against Indy, the same thing applied uh, against Pittsburgh on paper. This is a better football team than, you know, than the Tennessee Titans, you know, on paper, it's a much more talented football team, but. That doesn't matter if you're going to go out there and let the Titans hang around and make mistakes, turn the ball over, miscommunications. You know, you do those things and you leave Tennessee in the game. They absolutely are capable uh, of of beating you. So you know, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. You need to have a good week at practice. Hopefully, you know, the, the injury reports looking, you know, continuing the trend in a more positive direction uh, as it started to the last week or two. So you know, we'll see how it plays out. But Let's get a win. You get a win. You're feeling so much better about yourselves. Put Pittsburgh in the rearview mirror. You have Ravens fans, Baltimore fans who've been frustrated over this last week. Finally have something to, to be happy about after the last week. You do that, then you've stabilized. But yeah, I, there's there's so much that we saw last Sunday that is hard for me to shake. You know, I, again, I don't like seeing a team that handled adversity as poorly as they did across the board late in that game in Pittsburgh. Leadership, leadership, leadership. Uh, we are in Arlington, Texas. Luke and I will be together at Drug City on Friday for the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. Presented by the Maryland Lottery. We'll have some Raven scratch-offs to give away, hopefully with some lucky ones. I think they'll find me some cake. They don't have cake. They got whiskey and they have Malbec. So, uh, and they have milkshakes. But they'll have cake for me, I'm sure. They have some dangerously delicious pie. I know they have ice cream. They have the Harker right there. in the, in the the Luke doesn't know the joys of Drug City. So we're going to get Luke over to Dundalk. Come on by. Uh, say happy birthday. Say hello. Um, um, there is no game five at Camden Yards on Friday night, so unfortunately, and um, of course the the Ravens will be in London on Sunday. We're going to be up at Hollywood Casino in Perryville early in the morning on Sunday. It's thirty bucks for the brunch. If you want to come by, have some French toast, some eggs, some bacon, do it all day. Wings, sliders, the whole deal. I'm going to be having the bacon uh, B the salmon BLT. I love that that sandwich they have up there. So I'll be there early in the morning. I'll be giving away copies of Purple Rain too. Uh, I'll have Raven scratch offs to give away. They have all sorts of table games and, and fun stuff that they do every single Sunday, including having the NFL games on like great TVs. You feel like you're in Vegas when you're at Hollywood Casino in, in Perryville. So come on up uh, and say hello on Sunday morning. That's the other side of my birthday. So the birthday celebration on Friday isn't really my birthday. The Friday the 13th. Talk about lucky or unlucky. My God, the Orioles aren't playing. I guess it was an unlucky Friday the 13th. And then on on uh, a Sunday the 15th, my birthday is Saturday. The 15th, we get to celebrate Jim Palmer's birthday. So come to Hollywood Casino and Maybe I should wear my Jim Palmer jersey. That's what I'm going to do. I'm wearing my Jim Palmer jersey to celebrate Jim's birthday on Sunday morning. He's Luke. I am Nestor. Together, we're going to continue to do this sports thing around here from Arlington, Texas, back to Baltimore, over to jolly old London, and back again. We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. It's been a busy week around here. We never stop talking. Baltimore, positive. <laughs>